What's up guys, Perry from Rockville here, and today I'm gonna show you how to set up your Rockpar 50 LED Parkan wash light. So as you can see, it comes with the light itself, a power cable to power the light, a mounting bracket, and the hardware to attach the bracket onto the light. They're available in two colors of black and white, but the setup for each is the exact same. It's also got a manual to remind you what everything does on the light, and it also comes with a DMX guide inside that lets you know what the light can do with a DMX controller. So to set up the light, the first thing we can do is take the included power cable, plug the female end of your cable into the power socket on your light, then plug the other end into a power outlet. As soon as you do that, the light will power on automatically. Now there's many different ways we can place our light depending on the setup or overall effects that we're looking for. But before we do that, I'm gonna quickly show you how to attach the mounting bracket. So to do that, you're gonna take your bracket along with the hardware here. You'll take two washers and run them through each screw knob. Then you can take each screw knob and run them through the holes on each side of your bracket. You're then gonna take the other washers and run them through the other side of the screw knobs. Then you'll take your bracket and line it up to the screw holes on each side of your light. And then you're gonna tighten the screw knobs to secure the bracket onto the light. Now, if you've already plugged your power cable in, you'll wanna be mindful of that while you're attaching your bracket. Or to make things easier, you can do this before you plug in the power cable. You'll also notice there's a power out on the light itself, so we can electrically daisy chain our lights together. So one of the placements we can use for our light is the wall washing placement. Now there's actually two ways to do this, with one way being with the bracket and one way being without the bracket. The first way we can do it with the bracket out of the way is by using the rubber feet on the bottom of the light. So with the feet on the bottom, you're just gonna place the light up against the wall completely flush, and this way the light will be shining completely upwards against the wall. The other wall washing trick we can use is by using the bracket and spreading out the legs. To do it the other way, we're just gonna take the light and place it a few inches away from the wall, and use the mounting bracket to angle our light so that the light is hitting the wall the way we want. Now another placement that uses the mounting bracket is for mounting our light onto a truss. To do that we'll also need a lighting clamp like our very own LC70. We're going to take this bolt out from the bottom of the lighting clamp, run it through each hole of our mounting bracket, but you also may need to pinch these arms together in order for us to screw it back on. From here, we can loosen this butterfly screw to open up the clamp, line it up to an open spot on our truss, and tighten the butterfly screw to secure the light onto the truss. Now you can also use these steps to light up a DJ facade, but you want to account for the size of your DJ facade so you'll know how many lights you'll need in order to fully illuminate the facade. Now the last thing I want to go over is placing the light into your totem stand. To do that, you might want to take off the mounting bracket because you won't need it for this setup. Then from there, you're going to want to lift up the scrim of your totem stand, place your light right on the bottom, and then bring the scrim back down. Once you have your light placed the way you want, you can use any of the available modes or functions for the setup that you need. So to access any of these modes, you're going to look at these buttons here underneath the LCD display. First, you'll see this mode button here, which allows you to switch between the different modes available. Right next to that, you have the up and down buttons to cycle between the different settings. And then we have the enter button to save our changes. So let's go through all these different modes right now. So first up, we have the three channel DMX mode, which allows us to use three channels with our DMX controller. And then from there, we can use the up and down buttons to set the DMX address in this mode. And then we can press enter to save our changes. After that, we have the six channel DMX mode, which allows us to use six channels on our DMX controller. And from there, we can use the up and down buttons to set the DMX address and press enter to save. Later on, we're gonna go over the difference between the three channel and the six channel mode. Next, we have the color change mode where the light will automatically cycle between different colors. On this mode, we can use the up and down buttons to set the speed of the color change. So for example, if I use the up button, you'll see that the color changes a lot faster. And if I use the down button, we can slow down the color change. Then from there, we can press enter to save. The cool thing is after we press enter, the light's gonna remember the last save we made. So if we were to unplug the light and plug it back in, it's automatically gonna go to the last mode that we press enter with. Next up, we have the color fade mode where the light will fade between each color. And just like in the last mode, we can use the up and down buttons to set the speed of the fade. So if I use the up button, we can make it faster. And if we use the down button, we can make it slower. Next, we have the color strobe mode where the light will strobe between each color. We can use the up and down buttons to set the speed of the strobe and the enter button to save our change. 
Next up, we have the sound mode where the light will automatically change as it picks up sound. As you can see, it's changing color by picking up my voice and even if I clap, you'll see that it changes as well. Next, we have three different modes for the red, green, and blue LEDs so we can make a fully customized color. So for example, we have the red LED mode here. So from here, we can use the up and down buttons to set how much red comes through. So if I hold down the up button, you'll see that more red comes through our light. Then I can press enter to save it. Then I can press the mode button to go to the green LED mode and do the exact same thing and set how much green I want to have come through. Press enter to save and then press the menu button to go to the blue LED mode. Use the up and down buttons to set how much blue I want to have come through. Press enter to save. And now as you can see, we have a fully customized color. And with that customized color, we can press the mode button to enter the strobe mode. From there, we can use the up and down buttons to set the speed of the strobe and press enter to save. Next up, we have the color pulse mode where the light will pulse between each color. From there, we can use the up and down buttons to set the speed of the pulse and press the enter button to save it. Now, another way we can control our lights is by setting them up to a DMX controller. So to do that, I'm gonna need some DMX cables. I'm gonna take the male end and plug it into the DMX out on my controller. Then I'm gonna plug the other end into the DMX in on my first light. Then to set up another light in my chain, I can take another DMX cable, plug the male end into the DMX out on my first light, then plug the other end into the DMX in on my next light. And if we wanted to set up more lights, we're just gonna follow these steps all the way down our chain. So the next thing we can do is set up the DMX channel mode and the DMX addresses on each of our lights. Now there are two different DMX modes we can use between three channel and six channel mode. And using one or the other just depends on how much control you wanna have over your lights. So for example, the three channel mode only gives you the basic control between the red, green, and blue LEDs. And the six channel mode allows us to control these colors along with the other modes and functions for our light. So if you wanted to set up the three channel mode, you're just gonna press the mode button until you get to the A00 setting. And if you wanted to use the six channel mode, you're just gonna press the mode button again until you get to the D001 setting. And for either of these modes, you're gonna use the up and down buttons to set the DMX address for your lights. So for today, let's go with the six channel DMX mode and we're gonna set the DMX address to 001. Remember, you want these settings to match on all of the lights you're using in your chain. So now I can go ahead and turn on my DMX controller. Next, we can activate scanner one on our controller. And now we can go through each of the faders and see what they do with our lights. So in the six channel mode, we can use fader one as our master dimmer or how bright we want our lights to be. So for today, let's raise that all the way up so we can really make our lights bright. And now we can go through each fader and see what they do with our lights. Next up, we have fader two that will control the red LEDs. So the more I raise fader two, the more red you'll see coming through. Then we have fader three to control the green LEDs and fader four to control the blue LEDs. Next up, we have fader five to set our lights to any of the modes available. And depending on where we place this fader, it will activate a different mode. This is also referred to as the value of the fader. And we can tell what value the fader is set to by looking at the LED screen on top of our controller. So when you raise this fader, you'll see that this number goes up on top of your controller, which will let you know what the value is being set to. Let me show you an example real quick. So if I raise fader five anywhere from 51 to 100, the lights will go to the color change mode. Then from there, we can use fader six to control the speed of any of these modes. So the more I raise fader six on the color change mode, the faster you'll see the color cycle. If you guys get confused on what the faders do in the three channel or six channel mode, you can always refer to the DMX guide that's in your manual that comes included with your lights. Now, if you have a wireless DMX controller like the one we have right here, you can also get these wireless DMX receivers called the DMX WREs that plug right into your light so we can have a completely wireless setup. So to set that up, you'll see on the back of your wireless DMX controller, this switch here for the wireless mode. So we can go ahead and turn that on. And as soon as you do that, you'll see this light flashing right next to the switch here. And this represents the wireless DMX signal being sent out by the controller. These wireless DMX signals are also color coded. So we can press this button underneath the light here to cycle between these different colors. 
and we'll want to set it to a color that we remember. So let's go ahead and set it to the blue color. So again, this controller is now sending out a signal that needs to be received, and this is where the DMX WREs come in. So we can go ahead now and turn on our receivers, and you may need a small item like a screwdriver in order to access these buttons. So now we need the receiver to match the color that we set earlier on our DMX controller, which was blue. So to do that, we'll use this button here on the side of our receiver. And again, you'll need a small screwdriver to access this button. So we're going to press this until we see the blue color show up on the receiver. And as soon as we do that, you'll see that the receiver is flashing green while the controller is flashing red, letting us know that they're connected and communicating. Don't forget, you'll want to do the same exact thing on your second receiver here. So next, we can take our receivers and plug them into each of our lights. Then we can set our lights to the same DMX address and mode. And now if we go ahead and play with our controller, you'll see that the lights are now communicating and working. Now if you wanted to set up more wireless lights, you can either get more receivers for each light, or even if you just have one receiver, you can plug it into your first light and connect the rest of your lights with DMX cables and still have a wireless connection between your controller and the first light in your chain. Now, if you wanted to set up multiple lights, but you didn't want to use a DMX controller, you can always use the master slave mode. So to set that up, you're first going to decide which light you want to have as your master light. So for today, let's go with this guy right here. You're then going to take a DMX cable and plug the male end into the DMX out on your first light. Then you're going to plug the other end into the DMX in on your next light. If you wanted to set up more lights, you're just going to follow these same exact steps all the way down your chain. Now from here, we can go to our master light and set it to any mode or color. And as soon as we do that, you'll see that the slave light starts to follow. And again, this will work for any different mode or color that we set on our master light all the way down our chain, no matter how many lights we have set up. So hopefully this showed you guys how easy it is to set up your Rock Par 50 Parkan wash lights. But of course, if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, feel free to reach out to our customer support team through phone or email. As always, I'm Perry from Rockville, and we'll see you guys next time.